just, you know. I actually had a guy try and punch me once. <laughs> Really? Oh, really? Yeah, Morocco. <laughs> I didn't even like, I literally paddled out at sunset. I was taking photos, but I'm going to quickly sneak in and get away. I paddled out and there was no one around me. Like just paddled out halfway. It was on the inside, turned around, swung around and caught a wave. There was no one there. Paddled back out and it was like, Oi, you. And I was like, me? <laughs> and then uh, it was like, I'm going to hit you. Hello and welcome to the UK Surf Show. We are your hosts. I'm Pete. And I'm Mitch. And once again, Pete took a run up to say <laughs> hello. <laughs> I went to do it about four times. <laughs> it's not going to make any sense because these are going to be out of order because yeah. the army surfing one is done, but we've just got to wait for clearance. Is that right? It's, well, it just has to go through the channels to make sure there's no faux pas and yeah. uh, naughties and stuff. So we're just waiting for the go ahead, but it's good to go. So yeah. yeah, we've mixed up the order, like you've said a little bit. Yeah, First time I've uh, had to wait for clearance to release a podcast. It's clearance literally from the top. I don't just mean the army. I mean, literally from like the head of Spotify, from everywhere the UK <laughs> surf show uh, is able to be listened to because it's such a good episode. Speaking <laughs> of Spotify... Our stats came out, didn't they? Yes, they did. Now, obviously, this time of year, everyone is sharing their insanely boring stories about, you know, what songs I've listened to the most. Like, yep. I really don't care what yep. song you listen to the most. Like, I really don't. <laughs> but ours, let's talk about ours. And it's not, about it's, not about, it's not about the songs I've listened to most. It is about the download stats, specifically on Spotify, for yeah. the UK surf show, and uh, Pete, take it from there. Take it from there. You, you've put me on the spot. I'm trying. To, I'm desperately trying to search around. Uh, well, we'll before I do that, I got a message the other day. I shared it on the Instagram. My mate told me to give you guys a listen, and I've managed to get through 64 episodes in under two weeks. That's just <laughs> that's, insane. That's, that's, he messaged me as well. Actually, the same thing. That's like yeah. dedication. That I is, mean, that's what I do when I binge watch like Netflix. <laughs> yeah, that's mad. You're mad, man. I'll tell you that. I literally try to remember what happened on the episode we've just recorded, let alone listening to 64 back to back to have something to talk about <laughs> after. Like, really? <laughs> yeah, that's a bit mad. Dedication. Um, but yeah, on the Spotify side of it, it says um, some of the stats on there. This is Spotify only, obviously, you know, not including like iTunes and YouTube mm. and stuff, but we got like. Um, listeners out there scored your podcast five so they give us a five star rating people who've listened to it so thank you oh, very yeah, much for thank that you. podcast had a lot of gains this year increased 81 percent of followers 50 plus 50 percent in hours listened 48 percent in streams and up 40 percent in listeners so wait it's up 40 percent in listeners and we've gained 80 percent more followers 81 percent more followers. 81 percent this yeah, year so that'll be people who are already listening have then started mm. following i think as well i wonder i don't know what's yeah. changed this year in the podcast so i've got no idea what that could be related to uh, are you, you're gonna take full credit <laughs> for it is it absolutely Leighton, not <laughs> Leighton sent me the same message saying oh that's because i've left <laughs> Man, this is still late in seat. I love you, Leighton. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, eighty four percent of your listeners discovered you in twenty twenty two. So thank you, eighty four percent of listeners. Mm. We're li- now heard in thirty seven countries. And you're gonna list them all alphabetically. No, it gives me the <laughs> top five, which Alph- is United Kingdom, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, and the Netherlands for some reason. So um okay. I should have learned how to say hello in Netherlandish. Well you didn't, <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, let's hear from some of these people from the Netherlands, from Australia, from New Zealand. Yeah, if you listen, send us a hello or send us something or you know, send us touch. your impersonation of Pete's Hello. <laughs> just, just send Pete that all day. It'll do. He's nothing. <laughs> yeah, my, step, my stepson said that to me like um, yesterday. He goes, why is it you go, hello, and then you go into a normal voice afterwards? So I said, I don't know. That's just what I do, isn't it? Because of, of your belter. <laughs> yeah. And then um, your podcast was in the top 5% most shared globally. Oh, then- yeah. Let's just yeah. put that back into perspective. What did you just say? The top five most shared globally. Globally. Yeah. We are talking globally. Yeah. The entire planet. Oh, I know. That's it. It's, it's a bit what? nuts, isn't it? <laughs> and it says on there, like, 54% went through WhatsApp, 25 direct link, 9% from Instagram, 8% from other, and 4% of people shared it by text. Is that why all your data is constantly used up every month? (laughs) (laughs) Just sharing it. (laughs) And then it says also, one more thing in there before we get into the actual episode, it says that um, on September, between the September 11th and 17th, 
you had 74% more listeners compared to your average week. And I don't know what happened then, but I think it may be one Mr. Ben Gravy that was on the show. Well, Ever heard I of him? It, I think it was more about the content that surrounded Mr. Ben Gravy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's about you again, isn't it? It was, just, it was more about the... Um, Man gravy or Ben gravy, I reckon. Oh, <laughs> uh, the game, yeah, it was. So, yeah. It was just and, that. Um, yeah, he's done himself an injury lately. I saw Oh, him that was, day. I mean, man, really small looking wave. Yeah. Just took it straight to the shoulder and yeah, got slammed. So, uh, pretty yeah. hell. Well, get well soon, mate. And uh, Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but should we get should we get to this episode now? Because we've rambled on for about five minutes of nothing to do with this episode. And we yeah, should totally. Really. And what we should mention up front is because this is a reorder of how these podcasts are coming out. Our new show sponsor, our new show sponsor, yes, and it's I mean, someone a lot of you will already know. Mm, we speak about this lizard more than enough, so and it was his inevitable. T-Rex arms, yeah. and his T Rex arms. So it was inevitable that this was going to happen. So we are super pleased and super stoked to have on board. Mr. Alan Bissaker, a.k.a. Adrenaline Athlete, a.k.a. Lizard T-Rex Arms. <laughs> a.k.a. Sport and Air Conditioning Trainer. Sport and Air Conditioning Trainer. Yeah, so we're really pleased. Um, you know, I, I, I do his programme religiously. Um, yeah. Pete has the programme. <laughs> I'll do. Let's leave it as that for the minute. And it um, really works. Yeah, when I get my house back, I'll start. I'll start doing some of that training again. Yeah, you can still do bottle hops without being uh, having a lot of space. Look, so, look, look behind me. This is like all in this room at the me. moment. Is right. all, so everything I own at, for the listeners? What I'm looking at, because obviously this isn't a video one, is behind your head is your very well placed Northcore rack, which isn't straight. One side's higher than the other. Doesn't matter it, why. Doesn't it does matter, matter why. It doesn't, doesn't matter, matter why. why. You can come back to it in a minute. <laughs> but what I'm seeing is that you could have your feet hanging on one side of the rack, and your hands in the other, and you could plank in it. <laughs> I put three surfboards on it, and it fell off the wall. That's why. <laughs> it was. It's nothing to do with the rack. It's the, it's the shoddy workmanship that put it up. No, I put it up, and then um, so I've said before, like I've got um, like step stepson and their kids living with us at the moment so all my stuff's basically crammed into one room everything i don't want broken by small children surfboards are up on the wall out of the way but i can't get to them properly so i was stretching across trying to put it on put too much weight on one side which was basically me <laughs> hanging off of it and i ripped the whole thing out the wall <laughs> devastated yeah i mean they look good. i mean apart from that they do look good and actually as it happens i put my north core surfboard racks up in my garage last night I've now got eight surfboards hanging up, and I still don't have enough surfboard racks. <laughs> still got enough course. surfboards. <laughs> I need another one. But yeah, so um, we should say, yeah, thanks to Adrenaline Athlete for sponsor. We keep going off on one. This is what happens in phone calls. We spend an hour on a phone call talking about absolutely you, nothing. I did say it didn't matter about why your surfboard rack was looking the way it was. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But should we give out a discount code for Adrenaline well, Athlete? We as should, well, we should, and we should point out that. Alan has kindly offered to do a 50% discount code for our listeners, specifically for the annual memberships, not the monthly ones. So if you're interested in doing that, and there's two versions, there's a home version, which means you don't need any kit and equipment, and there's a gym version, which obviously means you've got access to a gym. Um, if you want to do the gym version, go on the Adrenaline Athlete website and use the discount code, and it's all uppercase, Surf Gym 50 and if you want the home version, same website and use Surf Home 50. Yeah, and get amongst it. Let us know how you get on with your training as well. Yeah, so thank you to Adrenaline Athlete for sponsoring the show. Cheers, bro. So should we should we get on to the actual show, what it's actually about let's, and who it's actually about now? Let's get on with the show and who it's about and who it's actually about now so and where we actually filmed it. We have on the show today, Alana Brown. Alana Brown, not Alana Brown Chard, as you'll find out. Or not Alana Chard Brown. Which, actually, that whole thing passed me by. Um, maybe I'll talk about that at the end. I'll come back to that. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, we've done this. Uh, this was a really fun interview, actually, in a completely, new, a completely new location. Yeah, a.k.a. the Scottish Surfers van. Yeah, we've done it in the back of my van, which was... Actually, quite cool. We overlooked Fistral, South Fistral specifically. South, get it right, South, South Fistral. Fistral, yeah. Garden Park and Space. Yeah, a garden with a view. 
And man, it was cranking, isn't it? It was, wasn't it? It was huge. <laughs> it was massive, but as yeah. uh, you'll find out, it wasn't massive for everyone. Yeah. So <laughs> I think, should we just jump into this one and then we'll come back and chat mm. a bit afterwards? Let's do it. And don't forget to come back and we'll give you some discount codes for Northcore and Surface Wetsuits. Big time. Hi guys, my name is Alana Brown and I'm from Newquay, Cornwall here in the UK and I'm 31 years old. This sounds like a dating site. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, swipe left, swipe right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so h- how long have you been in Newquay and how long have you been surfing? Um, I was born and raised in Newquay, so I'm actually from here. Um, but no sur- one is from here. Da, 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 <laughs> I'm a rare breed. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been surfing for around 16 years now, wow. which is pro- like over half my life, which is quite terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> and do you predominantly longboard or shortboard or both or...? Uh, I love shortboarding. That is my life. But I dabble in both. Um, it's nice to have a longboard for when it's like small or yeah. I'm just frustrated in shortboarding. So, yeah. Not like today when it's windy and... When it's hoofing. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a good uh, day for shortboarding. I mean, I, I've seen some of your pictures um, on Instagram and you're not afraid to send it at all, are you? I'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, li- I like the uh, the most recent one of the uh, zoom into the face as you... Uh, coming down the front of the wave yeah, yeah no that was really funny yeah that was um, at a secret spot yesterday we went um wave hunting with a big swell and just yeah it was mainly bodyboarders hence why i died but yeah <laughs> it was really fun <laughs> very lewis capaldi-esque that they zoomed slowly yeah. closer 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 and so you said you you started surfing about 16 years ago mm. sounds like you got into it a bit later in life yeah i did i started when i was about 14 how like, does, yeah. How does that transpire being from here? Just did it never take your eye or? Um, well, I was um, obese as a child and wasn't very active at all. Right. And then, I don't know, I always loved the ocean though. Like when I was a tiny, tiny baby, I still remember going to the beach and hating the sand because I'd mm. get like the worst chafe. <laughs> and then I'd like, you know, find refuge in the sea or in the rock yeah, pools right. and be like, oh, the water was just amazing. Um, and then I saw Kiala Kennelly on Extreme Sports Channel and was like, oh my God, I want to be you. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely inspired for it. Yeah, totally. She had like a mohawk and was just so punk, and I was like, "Oh my god, you're so cool! I need a surfboard now." <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the uh, the first person we've had on that could actually say that lady's name correctly. Oh, fair <laughs> one. Yeah. I think that's how you say it anyway. Yeah. I hope well, so. Well, I'm going with it anyway. I'm going with that. Yeah. So we should say actually we're sat in Mitch's van. We are. Yeah. At Fistral. And South Fistral. South Fistral, I do apologise. It's different, isn't it? It is different. Because this is like prime parking. Think of this as garden space parking. Normally, to be fair, I will hunt up and down this bit for ages till I get where you can park, get full view of the beach. But also, I've got what I feel like my garden, so my boards can sit out. I've got, you know, you've got a view. But in in the wind today, it didn't seem that fun. No. You know. But there's no parking out here, so it's great. No, and definitely. There's a lot of dogs, so it's also great. Yeah, and it is pretty big today out there as well. It's pretty big out there. So yeah, yeah. if we like drift off all of us halfway through this, it's because we've got distracted. <laughs> it's a massive. We're all mind surfing. It's mind surfing. So where do you normally surf around here? Can't tell you. No, oh, it's one no, of joking. Um, I love. <laughs> That's all right. If if there's anything <laughs> like that, we can bleep it out no it's fine don't worry uh, i love watergate bay um yeah. fistral is amazing obviously for many reasons but watergate bay the community's great you know everyone in the mm. water and it's so big that you can just go and like walk up and down the beach and get a peek so it's really lovely it's such a beautiful spot as well mm. isn't it it's even really just great. driving down into watergate mm. there's something quite mesmerizing about that yeah. i love that spot yeah so so yeah. How, how do you feel about summer surfing here Summer, I just, I'm not kidding. I've literally had the best summer of my life, like one of them anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's been so good. Uh, the weather was amazing, and it was the first year of Gathering Glide, met loads of amazing people, and we actually had waves. So, yeah. even if it was like little longboard waves or bellyboard waves, it was still good to get in like yeah. two or three times a day and just swim, longboard, bellyboard. Oh, so good. I think as people talk a lot about how busy it is here in the summer, but there's a lot more people in the water for sure. That's unquestionable. But at the same time, most of them people are beginners and they're on the inside. So even still, at, you know, my experience anyway, most of the people that are sat out back, it's not that crowded. I mean, there's more people when you get inside, but it's not 
Hmm. Like, unmanageable, I don't think. No, it's not that bad. Like, it, if you look at it, like you said, if you look at it from the beach, it looks like human soup. Like It does, yeah. Bodies everywhere. I call them speed bumps. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a few of them today, actually. It was, yeah. yeah. It's Taiwan, yeah. There's, there's, there's speed nothing bumps. worse than, like, sitting there and turning around and someone's just right behind you, in front of you. And you're just like, oh, like you were when you decided you were getting out yeah. earlier. And <laughs> I was decided I was going right, but you were right there. Yeah, that's it. That's about <laughs> right. We've all been yeah. a speed bump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible because you know as well when you're that I had to because it was wedging at Tewin and it was coming off the wall it was like wonky waves everywhere I had three people but two coming at me as I was coming back out from straight on but one coming at me from the right <laughs> I was like what's happening here there's, you feel so guilty but I've got no there's literally nowhere I can go yeah. to get out your way <laughs> so good so what made you start a surf club it's a female female only surf club is it um we run progressive surf courses so um me and my business partner samantha sunshine we have been coaching now for well combined 25 years which is quite a long time yeah. so it's been a long time coming and it's actually something that's actually come out of covid okay because before we were just traveling you know around the world and just bouncing around every couple of weeks to somewhere new to start coaching or right. you know, spend a few months in the UK to do the summer season. And then we would always talk about it. And then COVID was like, no, you must stay here. Mm, and yeah. actually had some stability and some time to go, well, yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. Yeah. So, mm. And so was last year the first year? Um, this has been our first year, which has been... So, really, yeah, yeah, this, this, this summer was... Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I'm saying last year, like it's <laughs> the next I, year I now. still think last year was COVID. It seems like this weird sort of period of... It feels like yesterday, but actually it was a while ago. Now. Last yeah. two, three years, just like... Boom. There's a lot of yeah. good for all the rubbish in COVID. There's actually a lot of good to come out of it. Because mm-hmm. you know, we were chatting before about people being creative and stuff. But mm-hmm. if you've got time, like, all these ideas you have in your head, yeah. but then you've suddenly got time to go, well, actually, I've now got no excuse to put mm-hmm. this yeah. into practice. Yeah, totally. And I love it. It's yeah. good. So how's the first year gone? It's been so amazing. Like, yeah. like so, oh, God, I can't even like put it into words. It's just been really lovely and just so nice to have so much support from people and yeah. like support from people that you didn't even know were there for you and just to meet so many amazing people that have come to our courses and I don't know just taken part in the things that we've been putting on it's just been so great yeah, yeah. what kind of events do you put on um we've at the beginning of the year we did uh, a drop-in sessions week where we did like uh, water confidence training oh, self-skate nice. workshops fear workshops like and that was just to get the ball rolling to show people what we were all about and just mm. to get people to be like yo we're here this is what we want to do and this is you know what we want to encourage people yeah. to get into and yeah it's just been it's been great and just the people coming on our courses um everyone's just so like-minded and wants to be there for the same reasons to like level up their surfing and yeah, have yeah, yeah. more ocean confidence and just to be in the ocean with lovely people with no pressure it's yeah. just been L- great. there's something to be said for people that actually want to be there isn't there it mm. just creates such a positive environment i think for everyone else involved with it yeah just takes that one bad egg doesn't it to, to bring yeah. everyone else down totally but that's what we're all about we just want to make put the fun back into some surfing and oh, fun into coaching because yeah. definitely the more fun you have in the ocean the more you're going to progress and just taking that pressure away, but I, still giving loads of information. I see, I, I do, I mean, I should say I do loads of surf coaching, but I do quite a bit with different groups, whether it be through the army or through, mm. I do some work for Festival Beach Surf School when I'm down as well. But some coaches, you can see they're there for a job, you know, and there's ones like, like myself, I get so stoked for somebody catching their first wave. Like, I find that infectious. Like, there's nothing nicer when somebody's there giving you the, yeah, and you're like yeah, yeah surfing I love this so it's how it should be Literally. that's how surfing should be yeah I just sometimes I go to the water and I feel like a cheerleader you know <laughs> yeah. just I don't know you get somebody a really good wave or like one of the first ever green waves or I don't know just mm. see them click with something that they've been working on or that we've been coaching for the other yeah, week right. and oh my god yeah it's just like yeah you just lose your mind lose control <laughs> what have you found have been the challenges if any in setting up a club and, and a business and, and taking that forward Probably like the adulting side. So, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a surfer answer, isn't oh, it? It really is. Oh, God. <laughs> 
Um, but myself and Samantha, we've been developing and running like progressive surf courses for another company for several years. So okay. we already had the courses ready to go, but we did redevelop them. Um, so we had that. It was just, you know, the building the website and right, okay, learning yeah. all the yeah adult stuff. So, that's yeah. uh, Building websites and stuff, that's actually quite daunting if you've never been involved with it. it and suddenly awful. you're there. <laughs> you've got so much the paying systems and whatever else. It's actually quite a lot to it, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we were like, oh, yeah, we can smash this out in like maybe two months. It's like yeah. seven months later. <laughs> Yeah, and we're like, we should have paid someone to do and this. <laughs> you get to the end of it and you're still never happy with it, are you? Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, it works and it's great and we're really happy with it. Yeah. All the imagery is great. And okay. But, you know, you're still looking at it and you're like, oh, I want to do this. I want to yeah. do that. I want to yeah, do this. Right. Yeah. 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 Do you have a lot of returning, I want to say customers because it makes it sound very, mm. you know, clinical, but a lot of returning sort of people. Yeah, totally. Even just this season, our first season, we've had loads of people returning already, which is so cool. That's and nice. like just to see their progression yeah. each time yeah. they come is just like the reason why we do it. So it's great. Yeah. So what what beach do you work out? Is it one beach in particular or do you just move depending on what the what the weather's doing we are mobile so um we try to be based at watergate bay because as we've mentioned before it's it's amazing mm. so much space as well so when it is looking like human soup in the summer you can just walk down the beach five minutes and then you've got a whole peak to yourself yeah so it's perfect um but we are mobile so we have got some nooks and crannies that we can yeah, go right. to if it's a bit too big or wild yeah mm. yeah that's the best thing isn't it so i, I was a question i was going to ask you as a female surfer we get asked a lot the question, which sometimes feels like a sort of double... It can of... feel like a bit like, a, I guess you're kind of trying to be caught out. So we've recently done a, a, a double Q&A session. And, you know, listeners just sent in random questions about peeing in wetsuits and, you know, all sorts of random <laughs> yeah. stuff. And some very credible questions as well. And one question is along the lines of, as a man, how, how, how do you feel when you see women in the lineup? And there's a, there is a bit of a... You know, I feel like I'm trying to be caught out because mm. personally, I don't think anything apart from I hope that's not someone else that's going to drop in on me. Yeah. So okay. I guess the question was the other way around. Mm. How would you feel um, as a female paddling out about men in the lineup? Mm. Honestly. Um, if I'm completely honest, it depends on the location and you can always kind of sense a vibe. So um, yesterday when I paddled out, it was just me and my friend Mandy yeah. when we went to the water and the rest was guys. And you do kind of have that feeling that you need to, um, oh, how would you even say it, like validate yourself or you have right. to earn the respect to be there. Yeah. But at the same time, I also feel like that also applies to men and, yeah. you know, it does, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm not a good enough surfer to, you know, just turn up and be like, the next wave's mine and yeah. go. Like, I, I don't know if I'm going to make that wave as soon as I paddle. So mm. I guess I, I feel the same when I paddle out that I kind of have to prove myself. I need to get the first wave I go for yeah. if it's a bit busier. Mm. Um, but it, it, it's user experience, isn't it? Yeah, like everyone's totally. going to have a completely different... Totally. Is that van about to reverse into us? I got, yeah. That van got really close. <laughs> <laughs> I've already had the bumper ripped off. <laughs> Here we get yeah. what bumpers are for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I feel the same because I, I turn up on a two-foot day at Saunton and I'm not sure if I'm going to make it out the back. <laughs> 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 but no, yeah, it's, it's that th- like we get that, that sort of question a lot and we've had it about um, sort of why is there not more female shapers and why don't you think more women are involved in surfing? And like personally, between us two, you know, I can't speak for everybody, but... We don't. Well, I, d- I definitely don't think there's there's an issue. But I've said before, I'm not female, so I don't know how mm. that comes across. But something someone brought up before was like, if you take skateboarding for example, like 20 years ago, there was no women in skateboarding at all, and they started to come in there. And now, 20 years later, they've started like women have started making their own companies and doing their own things, and it's like spread really, really largely. Um, 20 years ago in surfing, I think I said before, it was about it was about 10 or 15% of the population were female surfers. And then now it's about 70, 30, I think, is mm. the estimate now. So have you seen, especially recently, it moving in the right direction and things starting to happen? Or is that just me asking you a question? You're like, yeah, I don't really care about it. No, <laughs> just, no, uh, <laughs> it is honestly amazing. And like when I first started surfing here in Nuki, even though it's a surf mecca, if I saw another girl in the water, it'd be like, oh my god who are you but then right, yeah. you'd be too scared to talk to each other okay yeah. it was a weird thing you know like you'd see each other but it would kind of be like a mexican standoff right like you'd kind of be eyeballing each other and they'd be like <laughs> well what are you doing here and well what are you doing here and it was weird um yeah. and i've spoke about 
that to quite a lot of my friends and it's mm. like why do you feel that is even my business partner samantha you know i've been friends with her for like over 10 years now but yeah. i would see her in the water for two or three years and see her out every single day mm-hmm. every single day and we'd both look at each other and wouldn't even say hi and we we've talked about it at <laughs> length like why was that like why did we feel that we weren't comfortable enough to talk to each other even though yeah. we should have been supporting each other because yeah. there really weren't that many girls in the water and we both agreed that it was a feeling of having to like almost earn that respect from men that mm. it was like, well, I've had to fight for my position here. I've had to fight to be here to get that respect and to, you know, have the ability that I have now. And then it's kind of feeling like a bit threatened almost yeah. and a bit intimidated. Yeah. Even though as soon as we met each other properly, when we started working together, it was like, you know, instant love. Like, oh my God, <laughs> I love you. Let's be friends forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's weird, but same with skateboarding. Like, I used to be bullied in the skate park. I'd be bullied in the water as well. People would rip me for how I looked in a wetsuit, They'd take the mick out of me how I looked in a wetsuit and, like, just how I surfed in general. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, now there are so many women in the water and I see so much footage of women absolutely killing it in the skate park yeah. here in Newquay and it makes my heart just burst. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's so cool. Because I think, I think that's that thing you said of, like, paddling out and you seeing another woman and you not speaking to each other i think that's same for men as well isn't it yeah. i think i think that's the, the, i think it's surfing in general it's it's that really weird thing of you do feel like you've got to prove yourself before you can speak to people whereas if people paddle up near me i'm just like all right how's it going yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, man. it's almost like people. dogs like <laughs> yeah. marking the territory <laughs> going out uh, you know you have to just catch your wave and prove yourself because yeah. i know for myself if i if i screw up my first few waves i feel like everybody's just staring being like oh he's gonna screw up another one mm. but that's just i think there's a massive part of self and just pressure there but i'm not saying that that doesn't exist in the lineup at all like we just have a different yeah it's hard to see through someone else's eyes of of that path they've they've been in there yeah mm. and i hope it's changing yeah hope it is because it, like you just said that's i try and i stoke on people getting waves and Oh, you know? I'm like the loudest person out there. If I can yeah. see someone just dropping, like a girl or a guy, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like you. Like, I just, just don't nuts. want to be dropping on me. I don't care who yeah. it is. Yeah, exactly. Please <laughs> don't drop need. it on me. <laughs> so you um, you said you, you travelled loads. Mm-hmm. Where have you been and where's your sort of favourite go-tos? Oh, God. Um, I love Indonesia. I've spent oh, okay. about four years there. Um, but I don't know, loads of places. Mexico, Philippines, India. Sri Lanka, I don't know, everywhere. Oh man, I just yeah. best wave in the world you've surfed. Where is it? Ooh, I don't want to tell you. It's in Indonesia. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just say it's in Sumatra, but I won't say what part of Sumatra because Sumatra is huge. Yeah. But um yeah. We've just had yeah. I, I take myself off at last minute, but Army Surfing just done a two week trip to South Sumatra after crew left. <sighs> and they've just <sighs> and all oh, I good. saw daily yeah when i every time i logged into instagram was story after mm. it was like instagram figured out the algorithm to just show me my friends and and then <laughs> and i was like oh come on i can't log in anymore <laughs> i actually mute people so like you know during covid especially yeah. if i had friends or i was following accounts that people were just surfing the best waves i'd be like mute i don't want to see that because it right, makes me yeah. feel awful <laughs> <laughs> gordon so, ramsay was cutting about here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doing his thing yeah, yeah i know so like you know we we often ask people what's the best wave they've surfed and what's the worst wipeout they can remember so the best wave we know you're not going to answer it no but <laughs> the worst wipeout okay um it was in lombok when i was 18 years old and i was surfing outside and i was surfing the bommy and i remember there was this guy that i shared a boat with like this american dude and oh he was just sitting so deep and you know when somebody you can see somebody's like moving i was like going for the wave but he wasn't moving yeah. so i had to like go around him and like paddle it to into it even deeper and that, oh just that shit sorry no, it's, not yeah, it's, fine. <laughs> it's fine it's fine it's fine it's <laughs> fine you can say, you can yeah. say whatever you fucking like. He's got a potty mouth over here. <laughs> Wonderful. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Try no, to restrain. Fine. No, don't restrain. It's fine. But yeah, I just went over the falls and oh, there's just so much water behind that wave. Like it was just, it just, I don't know, it travelled. I don't know. It just held me under for a very long time. But at the same time, I was only 18. I've probably actually had worse than that. But in mm. memory, it was the worst. Yeah, so, that one yeah. that sticks in your memory. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them you can't no. let go of, can you? You just can't let go it's of it. No. Such a helpless feeling. <laughs> no. yeah. I had one a couple of weeks ago where it nearly got me. And it was just it was just a crappy little wave. And it just caught me wrong. And like 
flipped me over a couple of times and there was so much white water that I yeah. couldn't get back up through it and I was like well this is it I'm, I'm done. <laughs> done I think that's that thing though isn't it when surfing you, you get to that point and sometimes you're just like you like well this is it and I then had you a good come run. back up yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I enjoyed like, it you're struggling and then all of a sudden it's like oh all right I'm back if up that's now. how yeah. I went though I would want it to be at the end of the wave like I'd want to have maximised that wave mm. like if I got that whole down First happened out. <laughs> taken off yeah. and I died I'd be like, oh. if yeah. I got, they had the chance somehow to look back at that and think, I didn't even bloody finish the wave. Yeah. I know. <laughs> at least get like a little cover up and get turned. Yeah, Woo! definitely. Whatever yeah. that is. <laughs> I know. I don't know either. <laughs> but yeah, I like to think. So, what's the uh, what's the surf community like in Newquay then? For like, because obviously you get so many tourists here. What's it like being a local here, and what's the actual community like? Mm. How close yeah. is it? How oh, is, is, are you saying is there an underground surf community? Well, is there? Is there? Is there, is there, is there actually, a secret yeah. handshake? Is there? Oh, it's definitely surf. a secret handshake. <laughs> yeah. There's actually a few, but right? One for each beach. Um, <laughs> but no, it's actually amazing and it's so strong. And you know, like I said before, traveling around a lot and coming back. I felt like really disconnected from the community. Like, right. you know, walked down the street, wouldn't know who people were anymore, paddle out, wouldn't know anyone and felt like a bit of a, a stranger in my own hometown. Mm. But yeah. now you paddle out, you see everyone, everyone says hi. And, you know, like we were talking about earlier, like paddling out and people feeling a little bit like standoffish, like just being that first person to initiate hello. Yeah. It really yeah. does change the atmosphere and changes the vibe. And um, yeah, so if I ever feel that, I will always say, oh, you're right, how's it going? Had any fun nugs? Like, yeah. how's it going? And um, yeah, everyone's really friendly. It's very actually unusual, rare, if there is someone being a bit hustly or a bit, you know, aggressive yeah. in the lineup. I think that's that's one of the things about Nuki is there's so many beaches and waves to choose from that you're less likely to, less likely to get something like that. Whereas mm-hmm. like somewhere, if you've got, I don't want to name it actually, but like a smaller beach... <laughs> that you can get more people like that if it's just a smaller beach and it's just like one place to... Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd mute that out. I, I right. thankfully <laughs> looked at that beach when I was down there and it was like stand-up barrels. And I, I, mm. I wasn't aware of that spot and I didn't know it was considered the heaviest spot in the UK. So yeah. thankfully on the 5.7 that I had in my hand that day, I'd done something I've never done before and just turned back. I was in my suit. <laughs> I got all the way down thinking, looks much smaller at the other side. Yeah. Walked to the other side and I was yeah. like, nah. <laughs> not <laughs> no, today. Like, not today. It can be it can be very like standoffish on that. And I think that's, you know, like, it's, like I say, it's like smaller beach. There's not as much room and people are fighting for those those waves, especially when it's like a really big day. But there's so much choice. Like, you know, I, well, I don't even know how many miles of, beach and breaks we are really right, yeah. spoiled you yeah. are yeah, yeah. And a lot of levels really grateful for it yeah. and also not just how many beaches you've got like i obviously surf up north mm. and in scotland and i i am fully committed now at home hood hood boots gloves five four mm. that's the minimal and i've today is the first surf i've had down here four three i was roasting no Tropical boots no gloves vibes. it yeah. really is <laughs> Like, it's something else. It's like it's unfair on so many levels. Yeah. <laughs> well, I sur- I've surfed something a few weeks ago, and I was in. Uh, I wore my summer suit and no boots, and I thought it's starting to get a little bit cold. So I mm. bought my new surface suit, which is a five four that they sent me, and uh, I was absolutely sweating in it today. Mm. I was like. Could that water is nice. Yeah. It's still it's nice. fourteen degrees. Like yeah. it's not. That, it? Yeah, it's like warmer than the air. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, the wind mm. was a bit. Uh, today yeah a bit windy uh, it's a yeah. strong wind today <laughs> yeah you've been out today or not i was uh, having an admin day oh, I, I looked at my calendar and realized worse. that i can't remember the last day that i didn't surf and i was just like oh god and then i thought about how much admin i've got to do i was like oh i'm gonna be good and actually sit at the desk today <laughs> i'll tell you what that's a line in itself i can't yeah. remember the last day that i didn't it's surf really bad <laughs> i know well, no, it's really good it's really good but not good for uh not good yeah. for work not good for do, you, do yeah. you find then that because you've got so much on offer as long as obviously there's swell do you find that you can quite quickly become a bit of a wave snob and it might be two foot and clean and you're like nah it's not big enough or, i froth like a grum I don't, oh, good. Yeah. yeah no i'll go in anything because i've got yeah. a really good friend that just lives up there and that is him he he he'll be one of the few it's out you know when it's a ridiculously big day and he'll be out with with the big dogs and he and i get the theory he thinks that if he then goes out and it's like three foot that he will lose that the fear or he'll gain the fear factor back in his head mm. so he'll only go out on massive days Legend. which I hear but at the same time I'm like I'll be out I just want to surf 
I just, I, if it's on, I'm, I'm going, mm. you know? So I think you're losing something out. But having the ability to choose your days, what yeah. a dream. I know. Yeah. Really, really privileged. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I, see, I, I was saying, like, I've seen photos of you doing headstands on a board in two foot. Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> surfing, like, double over red. And I was, I was like, <laughs> where's the where's the middle ground there? It's just like... Just go every day. Everything. Just yeah, go it's every just day. great. It's yeah. just a good, good attitude to have. Mm. So what's... Uh, What's the next step and what are you doing next with the uh, club? Um, so we're really excited to be introducing some co-ed courses. Yeah. Um, from speaking to a lot of people in the community and just in general, there's not really much up there in terms of like progression or progressive courses for guys. Yeah. Um, so it's really awesome to be introducing these into yeah into our 2023 season. Oh, amazing. So, that's yeah, good. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, that, that's something different as well because... There's, it, it's normally you only see like, all right, it's a women's club or it's a man's club, and that's mm-hmm. it. It's, it's very black and white, that straightforward. Yeah. But to have it mixed is, uh, is really good. Totally. I think it's so important because, like, speaking to so many guys as well, and like, you know, we've been talking about already a little mm. bit, like, having that feeling of intimidation as well, like, yeah. that guys have. And, yeah. you know, there are new key women's surf clubs and, you know, surf clubs for women everywhere, and, like, you know, even online communities. But I feel like there's not much for guys. Like, yeah. there is stuff out yeah, there, yeah, but yeah. not as much. So it's nice to be able to include everybody because surfing is for everyone and just to, yeah, have these Because I guess, how can, you get, how can you get past it if you're not going to be in a position to, to surf together. Because yeah. actually I think if you, you could go out in a mixed group and be like, actually it's not, maybe I've built a little mm. bit of this up in my head. I'm sure that's not always the case. But, yeah. you know, if you can get past that by being with people, be like, I'm a hundred times better than all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's totally. something to be said there. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's kind of why I asked you that question earlier is because we, we do get that so much of that question of mm. like, why are women so misrepresented or, you know, why? What, how do you think they are um, perceived or, yeah perceived or and it it feels it kind of feels like it's it's sort of an attacking question because mm. as we said both of us said you know to be honest don't care yeah <laughs> as long as you're surfing and you're not being a dick don't yeah, care exactly mm. you know? I, th- I think it's hard because i do believe that maybe most women have had bad experiences with men in the water yeah. at some point but, in their lives yeah, this is good because yeah. like because not being Oh, what's the word I want to explain? Like not not being the person to put those bad vibes out, and I've not seen it. It's good to hear from someone who's have seen it or mm, heard of yeah. it. So like, could explain to people out there because I think a lot of men also think like, why are people keep asking these questions? Because we don't see a problem with it. And, yeah, you know, it might be smaller groups or might be people that have ha- have had those problems. But you know. Mm. So sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, it's, no, it's, no. Uh, you know. no, it's just a funny one, isn't it? Like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's almost like you paddle out sometimes, and they're already expecting you to fail because you're a right. girl, yeah. or oh, there's a girl here. Like, she's not going to catch many waves, and it's like you haven't even seen them surf yet. It's but already having that feeling in your yeah. mind, even though that might be a misconception, it's how you're made to feel sometimes. Mm, and yeah. I've even got guy friends um, who have actually said to me, "Oh yeah, when I see a chick in the lineup, I'll go sit next to her because I know she's weaker." And, oh, I'm really? like, and I'm like, yo, right. you don't no, do that to no. me though, do you? Yeah. So like, I, was just I, think, I was just thinking that. I was thinking, I fucking love it for someone to think oh. that and you paddled up next to them and just oh, be like, man. yeah, see you later, mate. <laughs> Boom. Oh. <laughs> That's why I don't sit next to anyone because I'm yeah. not better than anyone in the lineup. Oh, God. <laughs> it's just ability. so silly, isn't it? It's just so funny. But yeah, the ocean is for everyone at the end of the day. And it's just really, it is sad to hear some of the stories that women mm. have to say because yeah. we shouldn't have to be made to feel like that. Yeah. I think there's it yeah. potentially maybe that that issue stems from a generational thing yeah as in i like to think i, I can't really talk about my, my work stuff and some of the things we do too much but there's a massive i want to say push on inclusivity and all that mm. sort of stuff but there's a lot of talk about it and a, a lot of the talk comes from the top end down where there's an argument and a lot of people would say actually it's the top end the older generations that maybe grew up with a different mindset to everyone else and there's not a problem down at the younger age groups because actually growing up straight away through social media through whatever it might be these conversations are already happening not it's not new it's not nuance it's not out of the blue so they're probably not growing up with a problem or hopefully not that that preset mindset you know yeah. i hope I might be wrong. No, I agree. I think it might be a generational thing. Not for everybody, but um, I do think now with younger generations, you know, mothers are surfing, sisters are surfing, mm. and, like, there's just so many more women in the water, and it is just 
everyone's there out together. And sometimes there's actually more women here than guys. Mm. Like, and it's just, yeah. it's just lovely. But it's you know what the really thing nice. is? You're never going to escape our souls. <laughs> we can talk as much as we want. No. There's yeah. always going to be our souls. There will always be a there? bad apple, won't there? Yeah, no, totally. But That's to, a yeah. much more polite way of putting it. Yeah. No, it is. But to be fair, I've also had bad experiences in the water with other women who have been hostile as well. So it's not okay. just, I haven't been just made to feel like mm. that from guys. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's just yeah. a funny thing. Yeah. Um, what sort of hostility from other women then? How's how's that come across? Because I'm just curious. Because I, I, I think I'm lucky enough to, like, I've seen it from guys and I've seen, like, some, like, right dicks that have been, like, getting every wave but on, like, you know, they paddle out back round everybody and then they're back on it mm. again and you're just, like, you're just being a dick. Just, you know. I actually had a guy try and punch me once. <laughs> Really? really? Yeah, in Morocco. <laughs> I didn't even, like, I literally paddled out at sunset. I was taking photos. thought, oh, I'm going to quickly sneak in and get a wave. I paddled out, and there was no one around me. Like, just paddled out halfway. It was on the inside. Turned around, swung around, and caught a wave. There was no one there. Paddled back out, and it was like, oi, you. And I was like, me? <laughs> and then uh, it was like, I'm going to hit you. And he paddled over to hit me, and I literally just sat there, and he, like, hit my board. And then he said he was going to kill me. And I was like, okay. Cool. I like the warning, though. I guess he told yeah. you what was about you to happen. Gonna happen. Yeah, I'm going mean, to hit you now. I, I put on a brave face, you know, and I just smiled at him and started laughing, which I think made the situation worse. Um, <laughs> I love the fact that <laughs> yeah. someone paddled over, I'm going to hit you, and just hitting your board. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. think he expected me to, like, quiver, but I kind of, yeah. like, you know, straightened my back oh, and, like, right, yeah. held my face. But then I got to the beach and cried, but, you know... I held he, it. he didn't <laughs> see that. He, he did not see that. That's the important yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, held it together. What a tool. Yeah, <laughs> very weird. So what's what's your go-to... I know you did shortboard and longboard, but what's your go-to boards? What are they? Um, I ride a 5.4 predominantly by nice. Escape Surfboards, uh, Bill Attlee. He's been shaping my board since I was 16. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Um, got a new one on the way, actually. Uh, and then, nice. yeah, my longboard's just a 9.1. Like a 5.4. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if yeah. I can comprehend that. I just spoke about it a bit, but I've not long got a 5.7. Yeah. And you know, still he still thinks a 6.6 six is a mid-length. It says a mid-length. Mid it is length. a mid-length. Length, <laughs> length doesn't mid -length. make it a mid-length. It's the shape. Short borders, <laughs> as soon as you go over six foot, short borders go, yeah, that's a mid-length. Long borders not. are like, yeah, over se seven and eight foot is a mid-length. Absolutely yeah. not. I think it depends on your height. I'm only five foot one, so yeah. a 6.6 six is like, well, like woo. Yeah, I'm like six foot I'm one, six foot. two, or something like that. And that's <laughs> like, I can't even like, sit on a five foot board <laughs> interesting though, I've been riding that five seven for a while but I just I guess I collapsed to the massive worldwide firewire sale that just happened Did and I did. had to buy a, a Mitchado uh, a Mitchado is it is what called helium now. mashup yeah. at uh, five ten mm -hmm. so having been on that five seven for so long now getting on a five ten it felt like a boat I it was bet. actually odd but man what a board I've never <laughs> ridden a firewire shortboard Oh my god, that Fly. thing is something else. Mm. I'm never going to. <laughs> it's definitely I just not. literally like I will go down to my seven six, and that's about the smallest I'll go. I think I want someday. I want a shaper to make you a shortboard with the premise that you have to take it out and we film it. Yeah, but yes. somebody wants to do that. If, someone, if for a shortboard, I need like seven thousand liters. You in could it get one for each foot. Float. Float. Can make it happen. We we'll make yeah. that happen. Uh, yeah, get in touch with the UK Surf Show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, make me a shortboard that can hang you on. You change wall. your mind, mate. You'll change your mindset. I will on surfing. not. It will. I will not. I don't like short boards. I just don't like See, them. See, I used to say I hated long boards yeah. until I tried it, and then I was like, oh, this is really fun. Yeah. So, yeah. I kind of went the other way. I, I really liked it. I did a long board, and I got, say, 9-1, mm. which is a firewire, actually. And I just didn't get on with it. Like, I, I just, I can't make it look graceful. Can't make it look good. And I just like, what? I look, I just get blown about walking down the beach with a thing. Yeah. Everything's a drama. There's nothing <laughs> easy about it. And <laughs> That's why I like yeah. it. <laughs> and then people make it look so graceful and yeah. amazing, don't they? And they do, they, yeah. You see them yeah. walking to the beach in 50 mile an hour winds. I've said it every, <laughs> uh, the last few podcasts we've done, like I've said it every time, but I'm genuinely mesmerized when I see someone surf a longboard well. I'm like, oh, how are you doing that? Yeah. It's mm. next level it's to so do incredible. that. It's so incredible. Yeah, it is, yeah. 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 Well, what else have you got planned then? What else have you got coming up? Have any trips, anything else? Or is it just solely focused on the uh, on the club? Well, um, yeah. So I'm hoping to get out of here by the end of November, but I don't know where yet. So, um, yeah. I'll I'm go find some sunshine. Go get some sunshine. Oh. It's neat. I haven't been on a surf trip for two years, which oh, is wow. like unheard of because I've been going away since I was 18. So, so I suppose you could yeah. work it quite well now with like do the summers coaching and spend the winters... Uh, 
away. Yeah. <laughs> or can you, can you not take that with you? Yeah, we're we're planning to drop some um, abroad dates for yeah 2023, oh, which amazing. is really exciting. Oh, yeah. And then um, yeah, because we've well, myself and Sam have been traveling for oh god, donkey's ears. So um, we've got a lot of fingers and pies and some really good connections. So we're we're really looking to collaborate. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the coming years, which is really exciting. It's so powerful, a bit of a collaboration. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you you know you're established and, mm-hmm. and getting going. It sounds like you've got something amazing going on. Yeah, it's really cool. It's just yeah, we're really excited. And there's so many like new places that we want to take people and show people like quiet places and just yeah. Saint Andrews. <laughs> yeah. Saint Andrews. It's funny you say you've not been on a surf trip for two years, and like, to me, this is I'm here at your home, and this is my <laughs> absolute surf trip. <laughs> 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 no. yeah, but it took you ten and a half hours to get here. That's no, why. I didn't. I wish it took ten and a half hours. Was it was twelve and a half hours. Twelve and a half hours. Yeah, that's, that's quite why. It was, feet, well, it? Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the thing is, the dri- when you drive to surfing doesn't matter how long it is because you know what you're looking forward to mm-hmm. it's the drive back Home. afterwards is aw- it's the worst oh, i'm yeah. dreading it and it's yeah. colder but yeah. I'm with, i've got someone else with me we're driving back up but he doesn't drive so he, i just get to sit and watch him play on his phone for 14 so hours he can be the dj yeah. and he can feed you <laughs> snacks yeah, yeah totally <laughs> yeah. but gee, he done that the way down actually he brought some sandwiches that was nice of him. yeah, yeah. i was pretty happy with that <laughs> <laughs> oh dear i love it so yeah what's next then what's the the trips are they going to be co-ed trips or are they going to be female only male only I think we'll do, do a both? mixture of both like some co-eds and some yeah female only like yeah, yeah that'd be really cool I, I, I think that's really good idea because a lot of people I know like say they'd love to go on a surf trip but they've one got no one to go with or mm. friends they've got can't go or what you know got yeah. other commitments and stuff like that but also at the same time you've got that thing of people want to meet other people to surf with as well and i think something like your club is a brilliant thing where you can learn to progress and you can meet other people which you can mm-hmm. then go off and do your own trips and own own things with all together yeah and that's so special and that's one of the things that we we love being able to do and bring people together that do make you know lifelong mm. friends and those connections because you know if you do live in london or you live away from the coast it is hard to meet other surfing yeah, friends yeah, so yeah. bringing people together and just yeah like off you go go yeah. have adventures for the rest of your life <laughs> it's do really you know i can cool. actually testify to that even today like pete's just met you know the army surfers for the first time today mm-hmm. and it's the first day everyone's got together and got in the water but actually there's a lot of new faces in army surfing and same thing completely different back uh, backgrounds ages everything but actually just the second you're in the water together it's almost like this little group of people to everyone else, these are all obviously best mates, known each other forever. Yeah. It's just that thing that brings us together. Yeah. And I don't think you can buy that anywhere else mm. at all. It's really special. It's great. And to be fair, yeah. th- that said, sorry to interrupt, there was also two people. There was that, that, that guy and I think his girlfriend in the lineup who, because there's a lot of new faces, I don't recognize everyone. Mm-hmm. But you can just tell who's in an army surfing group sort of thing, really. And there was another two that were getting involved in the conversation I assumed they were also army surfing, but I'm yeah. quite friendly in the lineup anyway. Mm. And I think when we left, everyone was like, "Who? Who was that?" And they were just two random locals <laughs> that <laughs> got involved with the twenty of us. I was a conversation. They just thought we were all really friendly. New so friends, they will yeah. have left the you know town today. Like that's a really friendly spot, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. They come like, back next time and get punched. <laughs> <laughs> I'm punch oh. you. No. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what you said earlier about um, surf skate training as well. How essential do you find that, or how much does that help in surfing? Do you find it helps a lot, or oh, so much? It's yeah. amazing. Like um, I started ramp skating. When I was about 14 and I did it for a couple of years yeah. um, and then I, I really really wrecked my ankle as you do in skateboarding and it took me out of the water for months and I was like oh man this is like so not worth it but in that time that I was ramp skating it honestly transformed my surfing yeah. like it gave me so much more confidence out in the yeah. water so much more board control like yeah and so to actually have surf skates now to practice like surf movement repetition on land which we can't really do in the ocean because every wave is different um, yeah. it's so incredible and to do these workshops on our courses and then to get the girls in the water again the next day and just to see how their bodies change yeah like from being on surf skates is mental like yeah, yeah it's so cool like just to see that connection oh definitely yeah, yeah. i thought one of my biggest progressions from surfing was specifically through surf skate training mm. and and doing it right like you say you just can't if you wanted to go practice a bottom turn 
How many oh. waves might even give you the ability to do that? Yeah. You might not even get to do that once. But to do that over and over and over and over and realize what I'm always doing wrong mm-hmm. yeah. is so you can't buy it. It's it's brilliant. I'm just mm-hmm. waiting for the the surf skate that comes out that can help you with your longboard in because it's <laughs> it's it's so different, isn't it? It's that that movement. It's and, more short yeah. body, but then at the same time, like even like small subtle like you know like toe heel edge movements that can help with the longboards as well. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. That, yeah. You're just making excuses not to train. That's all yeah. that's happening here, Pete. <laughs> I've, listen, I've got a can of Coke and a packet of crisps. I'm good. That's my training <laughs> for the day. So do you, do you do any other training outside of that, outside of surfing? Quite guilty. I just, I'm a bit of a surf bum. Yeah. Um, I love surfing so much and just do that every day. But um, I Best used way. to used to train at the gym when I was competing, but um, I'm really not a gym person at all. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just go surf. Did, when you picked up surfing, what you said before you took it up a bit later in life, did, did it come quite naturally or... Absolutely did you have not. to really work at it? <laughs> it didn't come at all, no. I'll tell you about that laugh. It was terrible when <laughs> yeah. you started. I'm not oh doing this God. again. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, like, I was so unfit and so, like, yeah. I mean, I just lost a little bit of weight. I went on slim fast when I was 10. <laughs> so I managed to shed a bit of weight and then realised that I could actually, like, you know, join in at school with PE and, yeah, okay. like, do things. And that felt good. And then, yeah, like I said, saw Kiala Kennelly, fell in love with the idea of surfing and was like, well, I'm going to give this a go. And it was like, I don't know, I just absolutely love being in the water yeah it was just oh, amazing else, isn't it? i had no coaching no lessons i just got a board and went by myself every day and um yeah i don't know i just i loved it but it did not come easy oh my god i should have drowned probably many times <laughs> uh, yeah but um i originally started bodyboarding and i used to sneak off to the beach when i was like 11 years old i would tell my gran that i was going to a friend's house <laughs> and even pretend to be on the phone in the hallway so she could hear me <laughs> i'm sorry if you're listening to this gran because you don't know this yet <laughs> Um, and be like oh gran can I go to the beach with my friend's family and take the dog for a walk and she'd be like yeah and I'd sneak off in my wetsuit and my bodyboard and just go in the water and had no idea what I was doing and I actually got run over by a surfer I think I got Mm. caught in a rip and got taken out a little bit and he ran over me and uh, split my bodyboard in half and then that actually also made me want to surf which is weird I was like oh well this is like the next level in it (laughs) I don't want to be a speed bump all my life (laughs) I'm much better than that yeah so yeah funny and how did you move on to competing and what were you doing in competing? Um, so I started surfing and then did eventually meet some people that were like a similar age to me because um, the only people that were nice to me in the lineup were like older men <laughs> <laughs> and they'd like call me into waves and stuff. And uh, my friends that I was friends with, they were competing and they were like, oh, you should compete too. And I was like, yeah, okay. So I'd kind of like just, I don't know, wouldn't tell anyone I was doing it and just go with my friends and then just have a go. So how, when you started competing, how long had you been surfing? Not long, probably like a year and a half. Like, Sounds like it did come pretty quickly to you. It really to did. Me. Just, how, yeah, but you think, right, yeah. that year and a half is probably nearly every day in the water as well. True. It was every day, yeah, like okay, nine yeah. hours right, a day okay. in the water. That's about nine years worth of surfing for me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I did learn on like a 6.6 retro performance shortboard though, mm. with like fluorescent rails and channels and glassed in fins, nice. so that really held me back. <laughs> <laughs> but you look good doing it. Oh yeah, well cool. <laughs> how did that first comp go? I can't even remember. Uh, probably terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one contest though. Um, it was so flat and they put us in that I was like rebelling and I took like a tracker bar out of me in my wetsuit and then just started like eating it halfway through in like waist deep water because it was so small and awful. <laughs> no. It's its own. Do you enjoy competing because it's own separate surfing thing, isn't it? Some people yeah. detest it. Mm. I enjoy it. I'm definitely not a natural competitor and like mm. I had a lot of pressure from people like friends and people that I'd see out of the water would be like yo why don't you compete you know like you're you're wasted you're wasted and I was just like oh god maybe I should do this and then I would go and compete and then put so much pressure on myself okay. and then just you know you don't get the results that you want and then you feel awful you compare yourself to other people and mm. then it just took all the joy away and then yeah, yeah. it's a bit like surfing at the wave yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that thing of like, you just feel like everyone's watching. It, it took me, I think it took me about four or five times surfing there before I had that thing of like, it doesn't fucking matter. 
Do you, you say that though, but I still even now when I'm sitting, I I, I feel like I can never relax at the way. Everyone's wave. watching. Yeah, but you like, not even you like not, people not that. looking at you. you <laughs> <narcissist>. <laughs> no, but not even people looking at. I don't know what it is. It's even just because it's not like you know if you're waiting for a wave in a lineup and you just sit on your board and chill. Like you sit on your board at the wave and you're getting pushed into the fence and yeah. there's just nothing relaxed about any of there's it. Someone sat right behind you waiting yeah. for you to go so they can get their wave and you're like, oh god. And you know if you yeah. screw up that takeoff, like there's God's something coming yeah. right at you yeah. it's heavy but there as well when like, it breaks and then you, all of that said it's the only place you can go and get the same wave every time so you can just practice something like if you want mm. something you want to practice but that's what it is it's a training yeah. ground yeah. Or somewhere for somebody to go spend a lot of money and have fun or yeah. it's a training ground mm. for for you know high level surfers or, yeah. or low level surfers doesn't matter yeah. but it is, you're right it's a place to progress but yeah. you have to look at it like that I think mm. it, 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 you can I think you have to separate it from surfing in the sea because you can't, yeah. you have the session of your life at the wave. It doesn't taste the same either. It doesn't, <laughs> it, not at the minute it doesn't. I don't know which one's worse at the minute. you got round the corner with a big uh, load oh. of shit going into the wall. Oh, was that, Saint, was that Aggie? It was a St. Agnes, yeah. Oh, did you see that? It was disg- oh, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it looks interesting. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> And you were out there today going, tastes a bit funny out here. Was like, you're just you're like, surfing Tawan though by the harbour, so it's always mm. a bit fishy. Yeah. yeah. I, don't I, know t- I, said, I said it like was extra salty today for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I, 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 like Leighton used to take the piss out of me for that. It's like... When no, but you do get days like that. It's does... like extra salty. It can be extra salty. Yeah, yeah it can yeah. be, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just coming out of there. I'm going to make up reasons, so I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah, just <laughs> somebody will be listening going, what are you on about? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? No, yeah, so it's because of the... Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, you, um, do you get involved with the festivals and stuff when they come down? or? Um, I, uh, I'm not really a festival goer. Um, oh God, I sound like such a granny. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I used to rave. <laughs> I used to rave back in my day. Um, yeah, I mean, if I can get a free ticket, I'm there. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. I actually meant yeah. with the club. <laughs> oh, right. I thought you, you might as well run with it. <laughs> you like to party. Um, yeah, so that's something that we want to do uh, next year with uh, okay. the Great Estate Festival, and that's doing like a, a festival and surf week Yeah, okay. Um, for people that do want to go to the festival but have no one to go with. Oh, and nice. just bringing people together. Let's go surfing. Let's go to the festival together and have a great time. There's got to be a lot of uptake for that, surely. Oh, there hell must yeah. be a lot of people yeah. that want yeah. that. You'll have to expand. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Get your own beach. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, it, it sounds like you've got a brilliant thing set up and it's moving in the right direction. Mm. And I mean, trips abroad, especially like, you know, like you say, co-ed trips abroad would be absolutely brilliant to do. Mm. Um, I think you want to tell everyone where they can find you online and what where they can look for you and uh, hunt you down totally so you can find us on instagram at gather and glide surf um or you can check out our website which is just gather and glide.com and uh, we're on facebook gather and glide um and i'm alana brownchard <laughs> at gather and glide at gather and glide yeah <laughs> alana brownchard <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not your actual name um no but i, I was laughing because uh i had a blog uh published in surf girl magazine um on the last issue and they put my name as alana chard brown <laughs> oh that's <laughs> got a like, different connotation isn't like, it oh no <laughs> uh, yeah because my name's alana brown but obviously <laughs> it's just going off alana blanchard who yeah. absolutely shreds um, yeah. but yeah run with it just go with just it, go with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. no such thing as bad press yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. well that's brilliant thanks for taking the time to uh Sit down and chat to us. That's been really fun. Thanks, guys. That's all right. Especially in this random location. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. Got a good view. Yeah. It's nice in here. I've never used this like this. steaming up a bit in here now. I'm getting a bit old. Yeah, yeah very sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for that, Alana. Brown child. Child brown. I'm not sure <laughs> yeah. which one it is. And do you know what? That whole, I didn't make the connection, I'll be honest, between... Alana Blanchard and the Brown Child. I didn't quite get what was going on. So <laughs> in my head, <laughs> and I mean, it, it, from my knowledge, chard tends to mean, oh, I've got a chard in my pants, like a stain. So See? a brown chard <laughs> is what I thought the gag was. <laughs> so, so chard to me is burnt. It's chard. Yeah, it's chard. Yeah, burnt. Yeah, so a brown chard stain. <laughs> so yeah. that's what I went. But yeah, there's a tangent for you. Yeah, we've got, we're just going off on them today. Sorry, aren't we? Alana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, she she was absolutely brilliant to speak to. Like really fun, bubbly personality, and just all round nice. 
really nice, super positive, and actually ripper. very good. <laughs> yeah, very good at what she does. And what a ripper. Like, I mean, seriously, we've spent, we've been lucky, and we spent a few days in the water with her, didn't we, without even realising initially yeah. it was her. Well, one one was me and you stood next to each other and her absolutely tearing a wave up and just mm. us pointing at each other, pointing at her and going, huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we'll come in another day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not today, you're not feeling it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to go back to 1990 and get my shortboard so I can try and join in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, insane surfer, like yeah. not afraid to send it at all and, some of them post on Instagram as well. And oh, actually, yeah. she's I think she's one of them people that have just learned to not accept, but to enjoy a big wipeout. And I just yeah. can't do it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. She's like, yeah, there's some fun nugs out there today. I'm like, it's double over red and killing me. That's yeah. not fun nugs. <laughs> there's nothing fun about that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it, she's absolutely incredible. And I like, like a load of her answers were like really good to things we were asking her. And, you know, especially the stuff that we asked and talked about before, we've been asked about before about women in surfing and what mm. she thinks. And really, she's got the great attitude for it as well. And that whole thing about, we've spoke about it together, like, apart from this separately before and how that thing she's doing of introducing men and women into the same progressive club is a really good thing. Cause you pointed out the fact that if you don't surf together in a situation like that, how are you supposed to move on and surf together as well? Exactly. Yeah. If you've got this um, sort of picture in your head that, that men are the enemy and the devil or women are the enemy and the devil and you then, and I agree that you should then be able to be in a comfortable position to go surfing with your counterparts, should we yep. call it. Um, but if you then only stick to that and don't move outside of that window, how can you experience and, or how can you discover that actually maybe it's not as bad as you may have thought, or or maybe it is, I don't know. But yeah. if you want to move forward, so the fact that Alana's doing this, we're a business partner, and then introducing these co-ed events i think it's fantastic i think and i don't think many if any are doing that not that i'm aware of but i think that's class yeah and i think as well i would love to go on one of her co-ed trips actually for no reason than just to watch her surf (laughs) it's really (laughs) bloody enjoyable to see someone move with that much like grace and power through the water like up close like you see it on like you know wsl and stuff like that you see people Mm. like really ripping like that and it's like good to watch but when you see it up close and it's like you know 20 foot away from you it's a different it's a different ball game oh it's always it's always so much more impressive in person because the thing is and it's why you should never watch yourself surf because you're what you're used to in visual content is pretty much what you watch on you know instagram social media and whatever and mostly it's proper rippers like pro surfers or professional free surfers yeah just doing crazy things so then when you just see yourself just go left and you yeah. think you've cracked a crazy top turn and nothing's actually happened you know yeah. it's quite disappointing but so when you see it in the water man it's always insane when you, when you see her boards pointing at the sky and her face is pointing at the mm. like the ocean yeah you know that that's like like you said like she said as well you know it didn't come naturally she's had to really work at that so 100 oh, percent, yeah yeah um which that's one thing that we've got in common you know it doesn't come naturally to either of us but yeah. she's bit would it, it to a different level <laughs> it's a different level <laughs> wish you could actually do it yeah. <laughs> you're on level one game over return to energizer she's yeah. on level 98 <laughs> turn tape over and press play yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then there'll be probably about 30 percent of listeners out there going what's a tape <laughs> what's a tape yeah and then find what a pencil does with a tape i don't know why i'm doing uh, hand gestures yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it um, i used to record the radio when i was a kid i used to record the top 40 on tape and that's how i got my tracks that's how i got my mixtapes <laughs> <laughs> I used to do the same thing, mate, so don't worry about that. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, before we move on, the don't forget there's some discount codes for you as well. If you want 15% off anything from Northcore, use the discount code UK Surf Show 15 that's 1-5, and that will get you 15% off anything at Northcore. And if you want 10% off anything at Surface Wetsuits, use the discount code UK Surf Show 22 and that will get you 10% off Surface Wetsuits and accessories. Yeah, so yeah you know that was brilliant thanks again alana um it's just a nice friendly upbeat bubbly interview i just really enjoyed it really enjoyed hanging out with her 
Yeah, it was really nice, wasn't it? And it was cool to do it in the van as well. It was actually, even though it yeah. started steaming up and we were just mind surfing the shit out of everything in the background. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. it was really cool. It's quite a nice setting. Yeah. So we got uh we'll have another trip coming up at some point soon, won't we? I mean we've got these the next episodes that are coming out are gonna be new key episodes. Hopefully hmm. the next one will be army surfing if it's been cleared. If not, we'll be chucking something else in there until it is played. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of content good to go. And there's a lot of content needs to be edited because there's film as well with quite a few of them. So we've got loads in the pipe work. Um, we're looking forward to sort of planning and prepping the Scotland trip. Um, yep. We've got a lot of guests up here that we're we're going to get on, um, share some stories, share some businesses and all the cool stuff that people have got going on. Go to the Cheese Toasty Shack. Absolutely go to the Cheese Toasty Shack. You, yeah. I mean, you have to experience this. Yeah. You also have to experience Salt and Pine, which is a crepe shack um, not too far from St. Andrews. It's amazing. Is it, are you just naming places you like to eat now? <laughs> I mean, if you could go to Is that crepe... what you're using it for? You're now using this podcast to j- just feed yourself. Where you, like, I mentioned I mean, you on the it, podcast. <laughs> we are, you know, top five downloads on the planet. <laughs> top five, No, top five most shared. Yeah, top five downloads. I think. Is that what, that's what Let's move saying. on. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no. So, and also, we should mention again: if you want to get fit, if you want to get strength and conditioned, if you want to be surf fit, and you want something to do all the work for you, as in the planning, you just have yeah. to go and train. Don't forget, fifty percent off Adrenaline Athlete uh, annual memberships. That is, and if you want to do the gym edition, the discount code on the Adrenaline Athlete website is Surf Gym Fifty, all uppercase. And the home edition is Surf Home 50, and that's all uppercase as well. Perfect. And let us know how you get on. Yeah. So, yeah, once again, thanks to Alana for that. And, you know, we're, more of the Nuki sessions will be coming, more babble from us. And don't forget, head over to our Instagram, give us a follow. Head over to YouTube, give us a subscribe, or go to the Buy Me Coffee for bonus content, because we've rabbited on so much now, we might just record a bonus episode and stick that up as well. Yeah, totally. And also, let us know what you think of the video content, because we're trying to get more video content out, so it'd be nice to get some feedback if people are liking it. Otherwise, it's pointless. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. All right. That's pretty much it for today's show, then, and we will see you next time. Cheers. See ya.